Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters in Islam, our cultures, our upbringing, our surroundings, our family members, neighbors and friends, they influence our behaviors, manners, and even our religion in a way or another, whether negatively or positively. The hero of the past couple of episodes and perhaps the ones to come, Ibrahim السلام, the hero of rules of istiqama, he was born in a culture that promotes idol worship. So naturally, the norm is to worship idols because this is what he had observed as a young boy growing up in that culture, in that environment. Yet Ibrahim had that intelligence of reflecting over the fact that these are stones they neither harm nor benefit and as a result he challenged his people the rule of istiqama that we will be discussing inshallah ta'ala today is titled challenging the norm sometimes the norms are not what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sometimes the rule of majority shouldn't win we should be smart enough to reflect and think and ask ourselves the questions whether what we are about to indulge in pleasing to allah subhanahu subhanahu wa ta'ala or will cause the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and either way we have to make a choice we have to decide whether to follow and practice that thing or to stay away for the rest of our lives Ibrahim alayhi salam was of the type that he would stood his ground and face a culture that normally they used to worship idol yet he broke their idols, he confronted them, he invited them to Islam, he challenged his own father without any fear. Why? Because he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be on his side. He expected that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never fail him. He knew for certain and go back to the previous episode of tawakkul or reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew that when you fully trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will intervene to drag you out of your difficulties. When we observe the following ayat inshallah ta'ala, you will get to know how courageous Ibrahim alayhi salam was and perhaps we can adopt some of his traits of bravery and confront any situation or anyone who's inviting us to do the wrong and tell them in the face, you are wrong and invite them rather to goodness, invite them to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't only talk to strangers, he confronted his father. Oh my father, why do you worship that which does not hear nor even see and does not benefit you at all? Subhanallah al-Azim, when you pray to them, those idols, these inanimate objects, they do not, number one, they do not hear your prayers and they don't even see you. How could you not reflect on this? How could you not think about that fact? And as a result of them being deaf and blind, they wouldn't ever benefit you in the least. So he is talking to his father very politely, with a very gentle tone, yet very firm upon the truth. And then again, Ya Abati, O my father, and this is very tricky, Inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni Oh my father, knowledge has come to me, not to you. Knowledge from high, knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come to me. So follow me and I will guide you to a straight path. And this is very difficult. Sometimes I'm, I'm a teacher myself and students will come to me and tell me, how do we teach our parents who grew up culturally on the wrong in terms of practicing the Islam? And I tell them it is very hard to, to tackle this matter and you have to be very smart so that you don't hurt their feelings and don't make them feel that you are more knowledgeable than they are and so on and and as a result sometimes the ego overtakes them especially elders and they reject your teaching they reject your invitation but Ibrahim alayhi salam subhanallah al-azim was very firm in his approach seems like he didn't bother about the reaction he just wanted to save his father from hellfire so follow me oh my father follow me and I will guide you to a straight path and again Ya Abati, la ta'abud shaitan Don't ever worship the devil. And his father wasn't worshiping the devil, right? He was worshiping idols. But in saying that, he's telling his father indirectly that these are Satan handy works. This is only how Satan plot against you to worship idols and to stray away from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because shaitan kana lirrahmani asiya. Shaitan has been always disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, Ya Abati, inni akhafu an yamassaka adabun min ar-Rahman fatakuna lishaytani waliya. I'm so scared, I'm very scared that 
a punishment will touch you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is also the most merciful if you obeyed him and if you followed his command. And as a result of your disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you and the shaitan will be allies to one another. You will assist each other towards evil. Then the father reacted. The father reacted very, very strongly saying, Do you reject my gods, O Ibrahim? If you don't desist, if you don't stop right away, I will surely stone you. So depart away from me now. Leave me alone at this moment because this was going to be the case stoning you to death. Then Ibrahim salam responded, seeing that his father was very adamant to follow what his father has been following for generations. He said, Qala salamun alayka. He said, peace on you. I will surely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you your sins. And that was before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah. Don't ever seek forgiveness for those who didn't obey Allah, didn't worship Allah, didn't acknowledge his existence, subhanAllah al But Ibrahim, because he, he had that very kind and compassionate heart, he says, أَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكَ, لك رَبِّي I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِي حَفِيَّ He's been always kind to me. He's been always gracious to me. And this is an acknowledgement from Ibrahim alayhi salam based on his understanding of what's been happening previously. His reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not relying on his good actions alone and all the rules of istiqama that we will be discussing inshallah in the next few episodes. He knew that Allah has been always gracious to him. وَأَعْتَزِلُكُمْ but I will leave you. I will depart from this environment. وَمَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ And whatever you are worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala عَسَىٰ أَلَّا أَكُونَ بِدُعَاءِ رَبِّي شَقِيًّا Perhaps that in my dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I will not be unhappy. I expect goodness and best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what happened after that? فَلَمَّا اَعْتَزَلَهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقُ وَيَعْقُوبُ وَكُلًّا جَعَلْنَا نَبِيًّا When he left them and what they worship beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gifted Ibrahim alayhi salam with Ishaq and with Yaqub and both of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made prophets to the nations. When you, st when you stand firm for the truth, when you speak the truth. And when you confront these challenges and these norms which are against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you leave the environment that is encouraging you to do the haram, encouraging you to sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you leave that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return substitute all the loss that perhaps took place in the process with gifts, blessings and rewards. When you walk away from an environment that is inviting you to do haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walk with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walk by your side to guide you, to bless you, to reward you, to protect you. But will you stand your ground? Will you challenge the norm when the norm is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will you care whether the norm is followed by minority or majority? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Very few of my servants are grateful. Will you be among the few or will you go with the majority? The Prophet Muhammad said, لا تكونوا إما Don't be people of no will, no determination of your own, no decision based on your understanding of what's right and what's wrong. And then he continues, تقولون إن أحسن الناس أحسننا وإن أساءوا أساءنا If the people do good, we will also do good. And if they do bad or evil, we will also follow and do the same thing. So remember my brothers and sisters in Islam, if you wish to expect the best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be willing to challenge any norm that goes against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless you all and keep you strong. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.